Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Some gamers prefer multiplayer titles, others story-driven single-player experiences. But what we all have in common is that we want games to feel responsive and smooth. These are actually two of the main reasons why players invest in a high refresh rate monitor. But playing at a high frame rate on a high refresh rate monitor does not only improve how playing a game feels. In shooters it also makes aiming and firing at enemies easier, as their movement is a lot smoother when you combine a high frame rate with a high refresh rate monitor. In one of my last videos I talked about how a high ping is a very big disadvantage in online multiplayer games. And I touched on how the system latency or the delay caused by your PC affects your online experience. In general, games feel smooth and responsive when the system latency is low. While when the system latency is high, you will experience stutter and games respond with a noticeable delay. So when it comes to system latency, the frame rate and the refresh rate of your monitor are two key factors that we must look at. In today's video, which was kindly sponsored by Nvidia, I want to quickly show you what impact the latency of your system has on your online experience, besides how responsive and smooth a game feels. In this first test, we have an attacker and a defender. Both have an equal network latency of 52 milliseconds, so no one has an advantage there. They also have equal system latency, as both have the monitor set to 240 Hz, and they play at the same frame rate with their GPUs completely maxed out, which means that they are both GPU bound. Even though it's just a few frames, the attacker has a small advantage in this test, as he gets the defender in his crosshairs first. This is mostly down to the delay caused by playing over the internet, where the attacker or peeker usually has an advantage unless he is playing at a very high ping. For the next test I lowered the resolution and graphic settings for the defender to increase his frame rate and so reduce the system latency. That eliminated the slight advantage the attacking player had in the first test where both had equal system latency. In the next test, it is now the attacker who has less system latency than the defender. Which results in an even bigger advantage for the attacker. And for the final test, I lowered the resolution and graphic settings for both the attacker and the defender. Where the attacker again has a slight advantage. So to sum this up, when both the attacker and the defender have equal system and network latency, then the attacker has a small advantage. When both players have the same network latency but the defender has less system latency, then no one has an advantage. And when both have the same network latency but the attacker has less system latency, then the attacker has an advantage which is big enough for skilled players to benefit from. So, as these examples show, having lower system latency than your opponent can be the deciding factor in a gunfight, especially in competitive games on a high level of play where every millisecond counts. That said, for most of us, seeing the enemy a few frames sooner is more of a bonus that we get on top of everything else from playing at a low system latency or playing at a high frame rate on a high refresh rate monitor. Benefits like that games feel silky smooth and respond instantly to your input, or that it's easier to track and aim at moving enemies. What I also like is that playing at a high frame rate on a high refresh rate monitor puts less strain on my eyes, which makes playing games a much more pleasant and relaxing experience. So in today's video I focused on how system latency affects how soon you see an enemy appear on your monitor in an online multiplayer game. When you want to minimize the latency of your system, then playing at a high frame rate on a high refresh rate monitor will have a very noticeable effect, but you can do more to bring it down even further. To reduce the input lag, you should choose the highest available polling rate for your mouse and your keyboard. You should always close applications you don't need while gaming, like browsers which tend to use a lot of your PC's memory. Also close game launchers when you don't need them to prevent them from downloading and applying patches while you are gaming. You might also want to take a look at which applications get launched automatically when you boot your PC and disable what you don't need. 
Also, before you launch a game, select a high performance or even better the ultimate performance power plan which will prevent CPU core parking. These power modes can help to increase the frame rate and eliminate stutter. Another thing I like to do is disable fast startup. This is more about system stability than system latency though. With fast startup enabled, the current system state gets saved to the hibernation file when you shut down your PC. And then load it again when you boot your PC, which can lead to some odd issues over time. With fast startup disabled, your PC will do a real shutdown and boot up clean when you switch your PC on the next time. If you have Windows on a fast SSD, then you won't miss fast startup as your PC will still boot very quickly. Then you should make sure that you have only one antivirus installed. Some free applications try to sneak free versions of various antivirus solutions onto your system during their installation process. So you can easily end up having more than one present on your system, which can slow it down. Inside the options menu of the game choose full screen mode, as that provides better performance than windowed or borderless windowed mode. And make sure you select the highest supported refresh rate. VSync significantly increases system latency, which is why you don't want to use it in a competitive game. Only exception here is when you use a G-Sync monitor and have everything configured properly. You can find the link to my guide in the description. When it comes to the graphics settings, then you should try to find a balance between visual fidelity and achieving a high frame rate. Disabling bloom, depth of field, motion blur, as well as reducing the quality of features like foliage or shadows might not only increase your frame rate, but also give you an advantage in some games as it can then get easier to identify enemy players. If you have already set everything to low, but you still do not get a high enough frame rate, then you will most likely have to upgrade your CPU or your graphics card, or in the worst case both to play games at a higher frame rate. In general, there is no need to edit the Windows registry or use any third-party tool which claims to optimize or clean your system. I have yet to find one that actually has a noticeable positive impact on the performance of your system or provides something that you couldn't do with what is already installed on your PC. And that's all for today. Big shout out to Nvidia for sponsoring this video and my patrons for their awesome support especially during this pandemic which prevented me from creating videos for a long time. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more, ring the bell to get notified when I upload my next video and I hope to see you next time. Until then have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.